Are you? Good. Is is that phone link available to him? Uh, Jeremy, I'm checking checking with Jeremy right now. I'm letting him know that the Jeremy started back again. Yes, he is. Yes, things are going much better. Good. But he's requested that we still have that that company going to put the stuff from the servers onto this new server. So we're still doing that. Okay. Well, Commissioner Anderson, are you willing to do the application request for that? I haven't heard from Member Wilson either. I haven't either. Let me text him. You want me to or are you going to? Because I will. Jeremy, I'll be here in just one second. I didn't see anything where he was asking to be added. He's not responding to my text either. So. How are you? Welcome back. <laughs> Is that what that is right over there? Remember, Commissioner Newton didn't get in touch with you then, Jeremy, about contacting. About what? Yeah, he's 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 not joining by phone. So don't worry about it. Yeah. We've got a quorum with three of us, and I imagine Commissioner Wilson. Is Commissioner Wilson? Will not be here. Oh, Wilson, I don't know. I'm waiting for him. We texted him. We texted him. No, I, I, oh, there I he is, right there. Oh, okay, so. Okay. All right, sorry for the delay in getting started. Welcome to um, the Morgan County Commission meeting on May 4th, 2021. Um, we will excuse Member Newton. He's traveling today, so he won't be available to be with us. Um, and we're going to begin uh, with the appointment and swearing in ceremony of our new Morgan County attorney, um, who is Garrett, Smith, Garrett T. Smith. I want to ask you what the T stands for. You can tell us if oh, you want to, but oh, sometimes Thomas. middle names are just Thomas. Off. Well, I, I know uh, there's other Garrett Smiths in the county, so okay. yes, Garrett Thomas. Garrett Smith. Thomas Smith. <laughs> All right, um, so I'll take care of that. If you could stand and raise your right hand. Do I have to raise my right hand? I do. And then if you'll repeat after me. I, Garrett T. Smith. I, Garrett T. Smith. Having been appointed to the office of Morgan County Attorney. Having been appointed to the office of Morgan County Attorney. Do solemnly swear that I will support. Do solemnly swear that I will support. Obey and defend the Constitution of the United States. Obey and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity and that I will discharge the duties of this office with fidelity. Great. Thank you.
I'm going to try to sign it this time in the correct location. Congratulations, Garrett. Welcome to the Thank family. Thank you. Does he get to keep this? No, it comes back to me and we record it and then we give him a copy. All right. If you want to take a minute and take any other photos with your family, we, we can do that if you'd like. I don't want to, but <laughs> <laughs> they may want to. <laughs> Would you like to? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Do you want us to? Yeah, and all of you that came for this kind of stand behind it, they put them on the top of them. Yes. Not make it out, but I don't think it needs it. Great, thank you very much for being here, and thank you for accepting the appointment. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll begin with now with an invocation uh, and Pledge of Allegiance, and Commissioner Anderson has agreed to do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for... Um, at this time in particular for the freedoms that we enjoy in this great country, in this great nation. We're grateful for all those who have sacrificed for those freedoms that we have. We're grateful for where we live. We're grateful for this beautiful valley, for the acquaintances we have here. Grateful for the opportunity that we have um, to serve. Uh, we ask you that as we serve that we do our best to uphold what we know we need to and we listen to the voice of the residents and do our best to make the best decisions we can. We are grateful for the opportunity. We're grateful for all the blessings that we see, that we receive. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please arise and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, are there any matters on our agenda tonight with respect to which the members of the commission need to declare conflicts of interest? Okay. We do have, uh, as consent items, approval of the April 20th, 2021 meeting minutes and approval of the county engineering contract with Wasatch Civil Consulting Engineers. Um, we'll do those separately. Lance, th that contract with, the, with Wasatch Civil, is that on our standard form? Uh, it's a form submitted by Wasatch Civil. Yeah, it's in our packet. I, no, I read oh. the contract. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it was the same form, yeah. Um, so I don't have concerns, but I would like to approve that subject to uh, Mr. Smith's review. I think it's fine. The indemnifications, if you'll just look at those and make sure they're 
they're balanced. I think they work fine. And then with respect to county contracts, we've gotten out of the practice of having those contracts that it has approved as to form by the county attorney. Okay. And so let's get that added on for our various contracts and, and do that. I, when we were looking at the appointment and I read through the requirements for the county attorney, approving the contracts just to form is one of the things you're supposed to do. So let's go okay. ahead and get that formalized. But other than that, I, subject to his review, I'm, I didn't have any concerns with the contract. I don't know if others had any comments. Okay. So is there a motion with respect to the April 20th, 2021 meeting minutes? Any changes to those? No. Um, if there's no changes to the minutes and or and no changes to the contract, then I guess I'll take a motion to approve the consent items. I move that we... Um, I move that we accept the agenda, the meeting minutes of April 20th, 2021, uh, as correct and accurate. I'll second it. Okay. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So the motion on the county engineering contract. I'll make a motion that we approve the county engineering contract with Wasatch Civil Consulting Engineers um, uh, with approve with the review approval of our county attorney. I'll okay. second it. Okay, we have a motion for approval of the Wasatch Civil Consulting Engineers contract by member Anderson, seconded by member Wilson, subject to the review of our county attorney. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Already skipped ahead to declaration of conflicts of interest. So, our next item on the agenda is public comments. Uh, that we'll invite any members of the public that like to address the, the commission with respect to particularly matters that are not on our agenda or not scheduled for public hearing. You're welcome to do so now. Oh, I thought you were coming up to address me. No one wants to speak to us once again. All right. If there's no one else, then I'll close the public comment period. Okay. Uh, that moves us to our actions items on the agenda. With first item, Morgan Area Chamber request exemption from deposit rental fees and permits for Morgan County Fairgrounds for the 4th of July celebration, which will be taking place apparently on... July 3rd. Yes. There's there's one right there, so that'll... This one? Helpful. Yeah, oh, it's, gotcha. it's okay. a little silver thing. Perfect. Um, Tracel with Morgan Chamber of Commerce. We are here to request tonight permission to use the fairgrounds for our 4th of July celebration and then to waive the fee like we've done in the past. Okay. It'll be held on the 3rd this year because... The fourth is on a Sunday, so we plan to hold. We, this year, we're not going to do fireworks at the fairgrounds. We're going to move those back to the um, rec building or to the rec area behind the soccer field um, over by the high school. But we will have the parade go from the high school to the fairgrounds once it ends at the fairgrounds, and we're going to have activities throughout the day and then till in the evening, and then it'll end, and then we'll have a couple of hours off, and then we'll move over to. Um, the soccer fields with entertainment, food trucks, and fireworks. Okay. What kind of entertainment? Um, well, I'll be right honest. We're working out all the details. We've only known for the last little bit that we could actually hold this this year. You know, it changes constantly. So we're moving forward, planning it, knowing that we can home, have it. Now we've got to hammer out all the rest of the details next week at our board meeting. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Have you heard Robert sing? <laughs> Are you signing up? That would, that would be mildly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can start up a band. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen how those groups go. <laughs> We'd all have a good laugh. <laughs> so, you want me to make a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the request for exemption for deposit for the. Uh, Morgan Chamber of Commerce 
their rental fees and permits for the Morgan County Fairgrounds for the 4th of July celebration held on July 3rd. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by member Commissioner Wilson, seconded by Commissioner Fackrell to approve the Chamber's request. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any of you go? No, that was what I was going to bring up later. <laughs> well, so we are doing it. If any of you go and want to join us for the chamber, because it is a good way to come and interact with the businesses, because we get a lot of participation. Yeah. We will find a team for you if you will let me. You want to? Come here. Okay. Anyone else? When is it? June. June fourth. Friday, June fourth. I don't golf. You'd have a good laugh. I would. No. Do you need my handicap? <laughs> I wouldn't even know what a handicap is. is yes? Well, when people ask me for it, I say it's severe. So. But. We'll count on both of you if you'll be there on the fourth, um, eight, seven thirty in the morning at the golf course. We will have a team for you. I will check. I've got to check my work calendar for that. I was, gonna, I was gonna say if we can get another one it'd be good to have even more if you want to not just one from us but one you know I don't know if Matt wants to for his business or whatever so yeah he said he'll come Jared will come and then Robert will let you know okay okay thank you thank you all right item number oh two uh, Bill is it Coutts? Coots. Coots. Proposal from Cottonwoods Master Owners Association to take responsibility for maintaining paved trails from county for a one-time fee. Did everyone get a handout? Um, good evening. I'm Dave Coots. I'm the Master Owners Association Master Owners Association Master Owners what I'd like to talk about tonight is an agreement that was made between uh, the county and the developer and then where we are on that and kind of a way forward. We could go to the next slide, please. The uh, development agreement. So we they have that in, in a packet. Oh, okay. If you could go to the page with the development agreement as the uh, title. In the upper right corner, I have some red um, Quotations up there, and then down in the middle is the other red quotation, and that kind of highlights the area to read about the development agreement. Um, it, the, the agreement was made between Morgan County and Gardner uh, Cottonwood Creek LLC. Um, if we go to the next page, it has a summary of the development agreement. On that page, it's basically the developer uh, <coughs> granted to uh, county access to the public easement for the use of the uh, paved trails so that members of the public could uh, use those. The county became owner of all improvements of the trails, and this was in August of 2006. The county expressly agreed to maintain the paved trails. Um, as far as anyone at the Cottonwoods is aware, uh, the county has never performed any maintenance of these trails. And for those that live in the Cottonwoods or those that use those trails know that the trails are in need of immediate repairs. There's both safety and legal liability issues involved here if someone was walking along and tripped or, or worse. If you go to the uh, next page, the major areas of uh, concern, and I have some uh, photos there. You can see how we have what some people call the volcanic eruptions, cracking, um, roots coming up, causing problems for hikers and walkers and things like that. Uh, in yellow you can see, I believe it's a yellow color, but you can see that there are certain areas where the paving is worse and in need of greater repair. Um, we estimate that though the total length of the trails are about 6,360 linear feet. Uh, and so that would be the entire length, the area that's highlighted is the worst. On the next uh, page is our proposal. 
we would like the county to reconvey to the MOA ownership of trail improvements and maintenance. The county would retain a public easement there so that the public could still use the trails. The MOA would accept responsibility for maintenance of the trails into the future. We would like a one-time payment of $110,000 from the county for both current and future repairs. And the agreement calls for a 10-year future uh, support. And that's where we got the $110,000 for. We got with the paving co company. They estimated it's roughly $11,000 a year to do that type of maintenance. And over 10 years, that would equate to $110,000. So this, when you say agreement calls for, you're talking about the Yes, sir, the, develop, the development agreement. agreement that was uh, signed between the county and Mr. Gardner back in 2006. If you look at the next page, uh, funding options and issues. I tried uh, the three listed uh, entities there to try and get grants, but because we are uh, a private organization, the MOA is, um, some of the grants, we didn't qualify for that. The, a couple of the other grants, the Swell and the Utah Door grants, we had to have matching funds. And then on the uh, Utah Door, again, if you have private property, uh, you didn't qualify. So we didn't qualify for any of the grants. Um, hoping that there's some stimulus funds that comes down to the county, where the county could use those stimulus funds for COVID to support outdoor activities like hiking. Perhaps the county could apply for uh, some of the grants that we could not qualify for. And then perhaps if there's an infrastructure bill that's approved by the Biden administration, there would be some funding in the infrastructure bill in the future. Uh, as far as the MOA is concerned, we're starting up a trail maintenance fund so that perhaps we could match funds in the future. Um, we're having a community garage sale this summer where 10% will go to the trail fund. We also have uh, a new policy now where we're finding people who use motorized, motorized vehicles on our trails, both the paved and non-paved. And we will use money from those fines to go into this uh, fund as well. A perhaps out of the box uh, option that the county would have to approve is um, Cottonwood spaces six, seven, and eight will be completed by Gardner Development here in the future. Perhaps uh, money could be earmarked from the building permits money that the building permit fees that are uh, handed over by Mr. Gardner for trail maintenance. Some of that portion could come back to the uh, Cottonwoods. Last slide is the recommendation. Uh, we do believe it's in everyone's best entry, interest for the county to reconvene the, to the MOA ownership of the trails. Uh, the county would retain a public easement so the public can continue to use those trails. The MOA would accept responsibility for all maintenance activities. Uh, the county would pay that one-time fee, and the MOA would initiate a trail maintenance uh, fund and start activities to support that fund. I certainly don't expect any type of decision tonight, uh, but I'd be happy to answer any kind of questions you may have on this. Were you involved back in 2006? No, sir. I've only been in Utah two and a half years. Uh, Mr. Gardner uh, provided me with the majority of the background information. And what, what was, uh, I'm trying to figure out why the county would even agree to that. I, I guess I wasn't in that meeting, but why would they agree to, what benefit does it have? I mean, like, is that just like Certainly. the people in that, I can't see me driving down there and using those trails from Porterville, you know, but. We, we do have quite a few non-Cottonwood residents use our trails, uh, the bike trails and the walking trails. So I believe because there was the easement activity, uh, that that was to allow the public to use those trails. And that's the interest that I believe the county would have. There's two kinds of trails, too. This only applies to the paved trails. Yes, sir, just the trails. The unpaved the paved trails paved. Are belong to the association, and they maintain them. There's two types of paved trails. There's the main silver leaf trail that runs from the top to the bottom, kind of along the lake. That's just an asphalt surface trail. 
and then that trail system continues on what everybody else would view as sidewalk. It's just particularly wide sidewalk. So those are, that's not really atypical for the county to own the sidewalks in their right of way. We own them all along. <laughs> Even the ones that aren't covered by this agreement, we, when we require developers to install sidewalks, they're in the public right of way. So really the only thing that's unusual here is the asphalt trail. Well, my experience with Weaver County is it's actually not unusual to have the county um, be under agreement because it's a public trail. Um, I think what I'm hearing and seeing and understanding is that no maintenance has happened. So there may have been some some maintenance from time to times. I've had people here indicate in the past that there was some maintenance, particularly just removing the the weed eating and so forth. But it's pretty clear it hasn't been repaved and if you're coming from top to bottom on that track and you're bombing it those volcanic eruptions as he referred to them can clearly throw you off the bike it's so were there any uh, um, specifications of how close trees I mean those have to be from root systems right there are some from root systems and others so it's just and and it's what are those trees are those just cottonwood trees that a lot of them are just indigenous there. In right. hmm. Now, I know that you are, uh, your homeowners association is also responsible for the landscaping around the trail. And I've noticed in the lower end of the Silverleaf Road um, that you have trees that you have planted or somebody within the association has planted. And I've noticed that that is where some of the roots have gone and lifted up the trail. So if if anything were to happen and say for instance we were to take over it and just actually take care of the the trail those trees would have to be removed yes. because i'm not going to continually come back down there and take care of that trail if you guys allow for a tree to be grown there sure are you, are you talking down near where the uh reservoir just below is? the reservoir yes yeah those trees are actually owned by the secondary water company and a lot of those trees were removed during um, the spring. Okay. Um, so, I, so I think that you'll see that, but because of the amount of water that's in that reservoir right now, some of the trail is underwater. I know that You're too. exactly right. It, that all needs to be looked at and redone when I believe they're putting in a new dam here in the future. And that's when the new dam and all that will supposedly be done is, is uh, here in the next several years. Okay, so now that brings me to another point with yeah. that dam. Uh, does the whoever owns that water, do they have the rights to raise the water above the, the, the past high-level mark? Because when that trail was put in, there was a certain level of water. And and now all of a sudden this year we're trying to hoard water so that way we can keep some water in the summer so you guys don't get completely dry. And yet now it's covered up the trail that was put in for us to maintain. We can't maintain it if it's underwater. So what is your proposal there and whose water is that? So it's the secondary water companies and I really have nothing to do with them as the MOA. So I would be way out of line to say anything about what they're doing with that new dam or their water. The dam's owned by Cottonwood Mutual Water Company. Okay. Water stored in that reservoir belong, the water rights relate to the Cottonwood Mutual Water Company and the Mountain Green Secondary Water Company. And I think Wilkinson still own quite a few shares of that dam too. Okay. All I'm worried about is, is it... I don't think they do, but they may have some. There's one remaining that they have an interest in. But. So, so, I mean, that's something we need to look at. I didn't at. know the water level was above. Where is it up on the northern end of the reservoir? Is it covering the... the yeah. I, I, now, this I was told. We're at 90% capacity, supposedly, and that's when they go over the sidewalk, when they go above 90%, like you said, for the potential of a drought this summer. So that means we're going to have to go in there and we're going to have to change that route. Yes, sir of the trail um, to take care of that. So why are you asking for $110,000 up front, one-time fee? Well, really what 
from my perspective, what I'd like to do is take that $110,000, and we have some estimates from paving companies that we've been getting, um, and redo the entire paved trail, and then have the MOA pay all future maintenance on that, uh, even though it's open to the public. But we would basically redo the entire trail, get rid of the root system, make sure that we put it where it's not going to be uh, an issue with the future dam, so we'd have to coordinate with the folks that are going to do that. But I would redo that entire paved trail. Okay. Now, another question I have for you. I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> a sidewalk is owned by the county or by the city, whoever it is. The homeowners are required to clean them off and and keep them not necessarily in good repair, but make sure that they're in, um, able to be used. Now, if um, if there's something wrong with the sidewalk, then we have to come in and take care of it. What do you see as a difference between a sidewalk and that trail, which everybody uses down there, uh, as to why the homeowners cannot take care of it. So what we did this year um, was we allowed homeowners that would sign up to clean off their part of the uh, sidewalk from the snow removal. Okay. We allowed them to take $100 off their uh, HOA, MOA fees. Mm -hmm. And therefore we had, as far as I know, uh, all of the sidewalks were taken care of. Now, granted, it was a light snow year. But, uh, but that worked well this year for us, and we're going to continue to do that in the future. Okay. That didn't pertain to the asphalt trail? did not pertain to the asphalt, absolutely not. Just the concrete sidewalks that you alluded to earlier. Okay, so as far as the trail that's, that's, uh, that you, how many feet is the paved trail? 6320, something like that. It's a mile and a half. 6360. A mile and a half. Well, can I... Step in real quick on that. The est one of the estimates I saw for the asphalt, if I just did four feet wide, I actually estimated about eight miles, but that was for the full distance. I thought you said a little bit earlier that it was for the the critical areas is 6,000. Is that the total? 63, yes, sir. That's uh, what Mike said was the total. Okay. I, if, if I'm wrong on that, I'll get back with you, but I believe that is the total of just the paved. The area that uh, Mr. McDonald talked I guess it comes down to the contract, doesn't it? That the county has. Yeah, the county is the one that agreed to. that agreed to that long before we were even involved, but uh, all the way long. But we have to. Um, I mean, it's our responsibility, and to maintain it. And I'm of the opinion that um, you know there's a lot of highways in this county or not this county this state that are adopt a highway have you guys thought about doing something different such as that maybe after we get it fixed to do an adopt a trail and you guys take care of it with funds that you can create within your area or that when we do end up getting some grant and trail money with grants that then we can go and take care of it at that point after we get it fixed so I think I think what they're saying and I don't know what it would take to come in and repair and realign that trail and what did you say there was an estimate earlier estimates 80 to 110,000 and it's eight foot wide you know by however long so what they're proposing is first of all I, I live in the county, so or I live in the county, and I live in the Codwins HOA. I didn't even think about that as a conflict of interest. But <laughs> I suppose it is. Um, I, I have no problem having the owners' association take over the trail and its maintenance going forward. From my perspective, it's probably easier for them to do. Mm -hmm. And if the public has an easement over it, just like it has over the trails they already maintain, I think the county's principally obtaining accomplished its objective. We have, I live just up the street from one of the endpoints for some of the cycling trails, and there are people from all over the place that use those trails. You know, there's the 
the high school's um, cycling team uses them. Their mountain biking team will use them. And, and there are people who park just down the street from me and unload their bikes and head off on the trail system. And I'm sure they offload at other points up in the cottonwoods to do it. So to me, it's, it's more of a discussion of does the county want to offload the maintenance responsibility, let them take it, and give them uh, some amount of funds to do the repair that are probably necessary to do now. Some of it caused by root damage, and some of it just caused by the fact that those trails are now 15 years old. 15 years old. You know, it's, and, and I don't, while there has been some maintenance performed, it's been fairly Very minimal, little. and it hasn't included any, if, to my recollection, it's never been sealed, it's never received any kind of top coat, it's never been redone in any way, shape, or form in the last 15 years. So the, the idea that the, the asphalt portions, or the fact that they are now somewhat deteriorated, isn't surprising. So the, I didn't notice when I read the contract that it was very detailed in what the county was going to do other than maintain them, but they obviously decided not to do anything with them, right? That's correct. As far as I know, because, and Brett's not here, but it just probably got put what last ago. It's, it's entirely possible, and they've done some weed removal, but I don't remember ever going through and and riding them and seeing, oh, somebody's been here and done a seal coat. Sealed this thing. <laughs> or somebody's, you know, what did we do on, on silver leaf last year, the chip seal. That's never happened, you okay. know, to, to my recollection. So we've, done, we've not done our duty. Yeah, we haven't done our duty. And for me, right now, I don't feel the time. I mean, it's, we can't make a decision on it tonight. Um, at least in my opinion, we cannot make a decision because, I mean, everybody wants money. We don't have money. And I think that we could put that into a project or into being worked on as one of the potential ones that we need to do. And I agree, we've got a problem down there. I have no problem with that because there is a problem. Um, but I do think that we need to uh, see first where we can come up with money and you guys need to help us this is my request and i'm working with trails right now a lot and we need to have help from the community to develop a plan for all trails and so if the money comes about and yours can be part of that plan this is my opinion but this could be part of the plan as to main to get that trail back up to what it should be and then at that point I think we can turn that portion back to you guys if you'd like or we can maintain it I mean throughout all the county whenever we do the trails we're gonna have to have some kind of funds and we are working on trying to attain funds to be able to do that as a county we don't have the funds okay so what I think you're saying is if we were to obtain funding for trail improvement and repair and replacement, we could put that, the trail back into good condition and then we convey it that's potentially correct. without having to have this financial. That's that's what I'm thinking. Or you guys can just say we want the trail, we don't need the money, then that's all right with me too. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> and and I, I recognize that that would mean that my HOA fees would go yeah. up in order to help pay for redoing it. Right. Me, so. We know where you look. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> worth, it, it would be worthwhile either way. And frankly, I don't think the fees for the Cottonwoods are that high, personally. We'd like to keep them that way, but yeah, I understand. I mean, my big thing is I'm trying to keep our own county taxes down, unless you want to have another raise of taxes. And so to do that, we're going to have to just tighten some belts and, and, and at least for a while until we get an influx of money coming in, which I don't see that right now, not for the few years. But uh, I'm just trying to make it to where when we get this trail system done and we can put this in with that trail system that we're trying to develop and we can put that into the whole works, 
and when we get the funding with all of that trail system put together then we can include it with it if that's okay or if yeah, it's a good no, plan. I think it's great I, the cottonwood trail system is a good start for trail systems in the county I, I mean it's they've got a good system of trails mm -hmm. and there are others that will be added that will take it around the backside to run up um, cottonwood. cottonwood you know and and that's all that's yeah. all positive and good the the trail that runs along old highway is also one that is always neglected mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it, it it's there you can see it and it looked to me like the last maintenance project was on a section that the older section of it was done. It looked to me like it was a scout, Eagle Scout project to me. Now, I don't know if the county helped by providing any of the seal coat, but it looked to me that the people doing the installation showed up on a couple of Saturday mornings with rollers and buckets and, and put the seal coat down and swept it off. So, I mean... But that's another one that needs to be maintained. If you're going to have the asset, yeah, it's not unlike other assets in the county. Yeah, and, and those are, those are some of the things I'd like to see happen. Is is all of these trails, all the system, because I want us to be known as a trail town or a trail county where people can come, they can ride these trails, and that's some of my goals is to try to do that. And but we need funding first for it. And we're working with Northern, what is it called, Trails, <laughs> Foundation for Trails of Northern Utah. And so we're working with them to try to get some of these things accomplished that we would like. And you've got a group, a community uh, group that is already working on this. And there's another group that we're going to try to combine a few of them. And we're working with that in the general plan with Lance. And we're going to put everything together, and maybe by the end of this year we can have a plan. So, you know, and that doesn't mean anything for this year, I understand, but maybe we can direct Brett to maybe look at going down there and seeing what we need to do with it to make them at least where you guys don't have an accident down there, when then we become liable for it. And that's, that's my thought. Because right now, if somebody comes down that trail, they're going to land in, they're going to be swimming. They're going to do the triathlon, or whatever it's called. Um, so that's something that we need to look at. So can I make some comments? Sure, I'm done, at least for now. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make sure, I, you know, when, I, when somebody comes and says, um, or we've got a group together that will help maintain and pay for infrastructure at the county, um, that, that sparks my interest every time. <laughs> so um, with that willingness to put monies towards it, I think that... Um, that's going to push this trail system, this area that you've defined, high on the list. Um, I think it would be very beneficial for the county to look at this and say, hey, we've got a group of residents that's willing to um, basically take over the trail, if you want to say it that way. But, but we've got to look at the monies, and like Commissioner Fackerel's mentioned, um, some of the concerns I'd have is um, as insurance was brought up a little bit, so I don't know from an insurance perspective how... Um, if it's turned over to uh, HOA or whoever it's turned over to, and then a biker comes down and, and, and rolls on this trail because it wasn't maintained properly, how that would be dealt with. So I think we've got to at least look into that. I don't want to put our brand, our brand new county attorney on the spot right now, but I think we at least need to look at that and see how that would work. Um, I'd also want to have, um, if there is a transition of funds, I, I actually really like the thought process of either having the county get it to where it needs to, or, or finding a funding option that we can help out there. But if there's a transfer of funds, I think we'd want to see the, the, the receipts from that and say, hey, we don't, we don't want to just give you money. We want to see that it's actually spent on what you're saying it needs to be spent on. But, but initially looking at this, I mean, I'll go right back to the very first question Commissioner Wilson had. Why did we, why did we agree to this? But so I, I think it's a great opportunity. So very interested in, in working through this. Who, so. who did bid it for you? Yeah. Advan advanced paving back in 2015, Bill, is that what I saw? I didn't see that on here. I didn't see I didn't it on here. Either. Fact, but I have right here, we got Anderson Asphalt, Morgan Pavement, and Advanced Pavement. Yeah, but those, these are dated from 2017 is when we last made an attempt to get money from the county to, to do this and to do this swap. So we would want, obviously, to get 
Mm. An updated one. <laughs> and, and sorry, Commissioner Wilson, I actually called ahead of time and asked them if they could have any kind of other backup documentation, so I uh, saw that, that estimate then. So, Did you like the idea of building permit fees from Mr. Gardner maybe being diverted into that? Would, would that be even in the realm of possibilities? Well, that could be part of the matching funds. I don't think, I don't think accounting... Yeah, yeah, yeah sure accounting accounting we, we couldn't do it, that's true. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if that would be... Okay. But but I would, you know, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how that'd do it, but, you know, within your association, you could always go on earmark trails. Or we trail could increase hangers. the fees for you guys and then keep that part. Yeah, we could do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but we could seek public funding for trail systems and repair and maintenance That's of right. them and then utilize it there and then make this transition That's so right. that they have it going forward. That's I mean, true. it is a concern that we're under agreement and we haven't done um, very much, if anything. Right. Yeah. That's a concern. So It's a liability. So, yes. yeah. so I, I think it's very feasible for us to do later, but we're going to be working on this whole trail system. And we'll need, you know, if we do this, we'll, we would need an agreement, Yeah. you know, and articulate what's required in terms of the conveyance and then if we've taken care of it then we want to articulate what's required in terms of the maintenance going forward and the public use of it. And I mean the way the public use of it has been characterized in that agreement is as long as allowing use of it for free results in the indemnification under the state statutory provisions then the association allows the public use, which I think is good. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what we need to do to move this matter forward. Is this just a um, motion to table or postpone for further? I don't know. Well, I. I don't know. I think it needs to be in a maybe discussed in a work session or something like that that we could discuss some ideas and talk to the accountant and things like that and make sure everything's um, how how we could look at that and how it would be paid for and stuff like that. So public works. Yeah. Sounds like the infrastructure bill if goes through. You know cover about anything babysitting <laughs> I don't know. so what about a motion to table pending further discussions regarding funding yeah. and maintenance obligations I'll do it I'll make a motion that we table um, on the Morgan Conservation District oh no I'm sorry <laughs> proposal for the MOA, MOA um, so that we can discuss the trails and how they, they would be paid for um, and then reconvene on it. So basically we need to postpone it instead of table it. Is that correct, attorney? Attorneys? Yeah, we can motion to post, postpone. Postpone? Yeah. Okay. Postpone for discussion? Yeah, okay. postpone till a future date. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so there's a motion to postpone the proposal from the Cottonwoods MOA to take responsibility for maintaining paved trails from the county for a one-time fee pending further discussion on maintenance obligations and potential funding made by Commissioner Wilson, seconded by Commissioner Anderson. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That brings us to the Morgan Conservation District donation for Bag of Woad program, dumpster request for Bag of Woad. Well, I'm Jason Morgan, chair of the Morgan Conservation District. He's the treasurer. And um, time to do our annual Bag of Woad. Is everybody familiar with that, what we've done in the past? Uh -huh. um, yes. Last year, uh, filled bags myself. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, everybody down there in the cottonwoods is filled bags, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, just a, what we did last year uh, with the COVID thing, it just went crazy. We Kids come from everywhere because they hadn't been able to do anything. And, uh, in fact, we couldn't get bags. We had to turn, first year we've ever done it, we had to turn people down because we couldn't get enough bags from the state from huh. anywhere. So we ended up handing out 520 bags um, and brought back in 445 bags. So, I mean, that's uh, that's $10 a bag. So. Do they just burn it? Uh, it goes down the landfill. Which means it comes back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we, we get a dumpster, a big roll-off dumpster, and it just they, they goes down to the landfill. There was a lot of it last year, Brian. So, yeah. which is good. It's yeah, and last year uh, with the pandemic starting, normally we go out and solicit funds from you, uh, the banks done in the past, Geneva, local producers. Last year with everything going on, we just uh, got some money from the county, and, and then we we had some money we also used. To, uh, so we last year we got a thousand dollars from the county. And so that meant we, we put in uh, the conservation district about $3,450 of our own funds, which we had the money at the time, but we can't keep doing that year after year. You know, we don't have that kind of funding. So uh, last year, we just went ahead and did that. Um, so we are asking for if the county could do $1,500 this year. What What is the cost for? We pay $10 a bag to kids for for each bag that they bring back in. And so it's just a bounty of paying, paying for each bag. It's it's more, you know, it's So for that's kids. not a it's state true. thing, huh? Well, that's what I'm wondering, if it's under the weed control, um, what, what we created a few weeks ago, whether or not it would be under that jurisdiction to where we, I mean, they were saying they were able to get some, some monies for that. Um, I don't know if that's happened or not. We could ask Brett, but they need to have a decision now because they're going to start doing it here right away. Not in, in the past. I mean, we, you know, Brett's went worked ahead, you know, to get the this the, the weed control, get the committee together. Right, but which you guys are past, part of it. We, we've been we, we've been the ones that's done it, and we have pushed grants through for the county before, um, but. It won um, three or three or four years ago. We was able to get one pushed through the thirty-two hundred and some dollars that they could buy spray to help the county out with with stuff like that. But but we is it's really a fine line, and that's why we've been trying to push to get this weed the weed committee and that you know get it, everything established on it because there are things out there grants and whatnot that, that that's available, but we have to. In turn, we have to be set up correctly to be able to submit on everything. Okay, and you guys are on that board, aren't you? I'm not. Neither uh, one of us are. Oh, I thought one of you was. Um, okay. I think they put Kevin Thurston, who is on our board, okay. is on it, and Aaron Walter okay. is also on our board. And Chet Adams. Chet Adams and somebody Randy else. Sessions. Yeah, Randy Sessions. But we stepped in and started doing that as the weed board because it just wasn't happening. But right. as a conservation district, our role is to assist the weed board and with whether it be funding or help them get funding. So we was that's why we've been trying to push to get this weed board assembled that's not us, you know. Right. Um, this, this bag of woad, whether it falls under the weed, we've done this for I don't know how many years, ever since I've been on the board. And uh, I don't know where the funding. I think in the past they pulled the funds out of just the general fund. I guess I don't. I heard the the garbage. Yes. The garbage in the past. Is that where it so comes last from? Last year it was a thousand dollar donation last year, as well as the dumping fees. So yes. you request a dumpster. So last year you made the donation and the roll off for the the dumpster and paid for it out of the garbage fund. Okay. And then you tell us the day you want the dumpster and we, the commissioner over that makes the arrangements to get the dumpster to the road shed on the day that you request it. Yeah, we'll actually need it on the 12th. Can I make one request? I know in your brochure 
you have certain dates of the 12th, 19th, and 26th. Can you go one week more because this year we're a little slow in having Dyer's World show up? We have in the past. It just kind of depends on. I mean, we set these dates quite a while ago, and, right. and then you never know. Yeah, it's not hardly out yet. And right. Last year we went. We did go. Yeah. We did the last, go. the last couple of years we, we have. We extend it, and we kind of make that call as we go through. You know. And, okay. And last year we could have gone another week, but we couldn't get back. <laughs> yeah. So, and then it uh, comes. It's pretty time consuming for us. Too, you know. So where do you get the bags, by the way? Usually from the state road. Okay. They're the orange bags, like this for garbage use bags. A long, long garbage pickup on the interstate. Okay. Right. And we went over here, just over to our state road shop, and they said, "Oh yeah, you, we'll get you all we want, all you want." And we got like what two boxes, and then they couldn't get any more. Yeah. We finally did get quite a few, but we was all done. Yeah. So we've got quite a few stacked up now. Good. But they usually get donated from the state. Has it helped? Yes. Yeah. It, <laughs> uh, you're never going to con completely control it. For one of the reasons is a lot of the places, it's getting to where it's up on the hills, and you, a lot of these are moms take their kids, and it's pretty hard to get to or along the railroad tracks, along the freeway. You're not going to go dump your kids out along the freeway to pick it. So. But in, in certain spots, down like in the cottonwoods and stuff like that, I, I think it's really helped keep it from spreading. I, we're not eradicating it by any means, but I think we're keeping it in check. Go down below, I mean, it, yeah, it's we've got horrible. it here, but it's nothing like it either. Hmm. So do you know what it is, Matt? Yeah, I know what it is. Uh, uh, do, you know the, they, they, do you know the devastating effects of it? No. Why don't you tell them, Mike? You know it. Yeah, if, if it, for one thing, nothing will eat it livestock-wise, and, and it grows, and, and it takes over, and it puts out like a toxin, and nothing will grow around it, and uh, it, can, it can wipe out a range, or, I mean, it looks real pretty yellow, you know, people think it's pretty, but, and it, it's unbelievable how it spreads. And then afterward, then the seeds come down, and they're really dark, deep black that just spread like wildfire, and over in Ogden Valley, it's really bad, and it gets into people's, uh, you know, the ground, the farm, farm ground, and it ruins crops. And it's very devastating. It's an invasive species. I usually take my kids around, and say I've only got one that's aged now, but they get sick of me taking them because I don't go to a big patch. I want to go get these ones that are here and there that, to keep right. them from getting big patches, so it takes them forever to fill back, so they don't like them with me. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, there is one thing you can use it for. If you ever wanted, if your kids really wanted to, you know, you could take the roots and use them for purple dye. Seriously, that is what you can use it for. Is It's a purple dye, and it'll turn everything purple. And that's the roots. So, yeah, it is, if you wanted to do it. A couple of years ago, because everybody, when we're doing it, a lot of people ask, well, is this the best way to control it? And no, it's not probably the best way. I mean, it can be sprayed, but it has to be sprayed, like, right now. Right. Before it turns yellow. Once it turns yellow, it's pretty hard to, to kill with chemicals. So it's, you have to have somebody that knows what it looks like before it turns yellow to spray it. But, hmm. And we, you know, a few years ago we bought some chemicals and we've thrown out, uh, put some flyers out that we have chemical available for uh, landowners and we've had very little response. Hmm. Free chemicals. So, okay. Is there a motion? I'll move that we, uh, let's see if I can get it. I move that we have a $1,500 donation to the bag award program and also supply a dumpster and pay for that. From the garbage fund. From the garbage fund. Is there a second? So it's $1,500 plus the the Plus dumpster. the dumpster. So about two grand. Two grand. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Fackrell, seconded by Commissioner Wilson, to support the donation for Bag of Woad program in the amount of $1,500 plus a dumpster fee. The dumpster will be there on June 12, 2021, paid for out of the garbage fund. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?
Okay, thank you. Um, who is over the, who do I contact on the dumpster? Mike Newton. Mike Newton, Commissioner Special Newton, he's not here tonight. Do you have his number? Public yeah. works. Public yeah. works. Okay. So, yeah, I, I already talked to Jason and know where he wants it and stuff over there. So. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, any commissioner updates or comments? I've got some if nobody else does. I've got one too. Go ahead. I just want to give you an update on the internet. I talked with Beehive yesterday and they're lagging behind. And their Beehive, they're working right now in the Highlands area first, is their first phase. And they're putting that in. Um, they're having some trouble with uh, Rocky Mountain Power getting the power, you know, them to agree to put, I guess, the the stuff on the poles. And um, so anyway, they're they're getting that, but the rest of it won't be done till later this year or next year. However, Liberty Broadband gave me an update on theirs, and they're still on target for having the majority of the county covered by July fifteenth. So, so are we up and running here yet? No, that will be next week because they had one more place that they were trying to get and it looks like as of today, it looks like they've agreed to a contract where the other tower is going to go and the towers are going to be basically starts from here and then it shoots off to, uh, there's a place over, that I think it's called the Ridges. No, it's over in the Patterson subdivision and then there's one up on Clark's Dry Farm up there, and then one up in Porterville, and that's basically the whole thing. And then later they'll put one up this way towards Croydon. So we'll have all of Croydon done, everybody. So you should be able to get internet by then. The other thing is, is if anybody is interested in Liberty Broadband, the phone number, I don't have any cards, but let me give everybody the phone number or whoever would like it. The um, um, the phone number to call and get on the waiting list because the waiting list is getting big. It's one eight or eight six six seven eight zero eight zero three six, and that's for Liberty Broadband. And uh, Can do that one more time. Yeah, it's eight six six. Seven eight zero eight zero three six, and it should be they should be installing here within a week, starting as soon as they get these towers here done. Okay, that's one thing. Now the other thing is, is as soon as we get approved, Morgan County's website and domain address will be Morgan. MorganCountyUtah.gov. So that's another thing that everything's going to be happening. So just for, so that everybody's aware. Okay. And anybody else that has any um, ideas for the CED board, or not the CED board, but the community economic development to give us your priorities, I'd appreciate you sending it to me. Other than that, that's it for now. Um, talk to uh, Wellers, and uh, they've given us some great ideas on some equipment for our emergency unit. They actually do have a program where we, they will give us a ranger and a snowmobile every year for zero cost, and at that, at the end of the year, we could purchase it if we wanted to for a used figure rather than than having to buy brand new vehicles and if we wanted to do it to where we had two units we could buy one one year and then just get the free one every year and then every few years upgrade to and you know to one that's more reliable but but they that's two vehicles for free every year as long as we get them ordered in the time frames that that they want 
They also said that uh, um, anyone that wants to be on search and rescue, they have a program too where the people in the community, if they want to be on the search and rescue team, can buy snowmobiles at a, a great reduced cost too, if they want to be a part of that group. So, and wellers because state contract, right? Or the pardon? Are, aren't wellers under state contract? I don't know uh, as far as that goes. I just know that they do, they provide for Duchesne, they Summit, yeah. they they do a lot of them. So. My understanding is they have a state contract, so that's what makes the county available to use them versus others out there. Wow. Okay. So that that'll save us save us some money there. So. No, that's great. Do you know Do you know on the the boat if they use just one dumpster full? No, it, we usually have to have it dumped. Um, it depends. I think last year we ended up that it took three times to get it all done. Is he, and that's with him crushing it down and everything? We, we mash it down pretty good. Really? We usually get away with two, but, but like last year, the 445 bags, that's the most we've ever done. Um, in the past, I think like 360 bags was the most we'd ever handed out, and 332 or something was the most we'd ever gotten back in. Stacy, have we ever tried to get uh, a waste management company to to donate that? Why don't we see? Well, I, I text who I use all the time, and I'll see what they say, but you'd almost think that the county, the county contract would maybe provide a dumpster, you know, for us or something like that. It might be worth, I can talk to Mike, and it might be worth just asking him. Yeah. yeah. I could agree. Ask him if you want me to. Talk to Mike if he wants me to go to him. He lives down the street. Oh, he does? Yeah. Who has it? Robison's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? The airport advisory board is working through getting bids and so forth, but they, we don't have all of them back yet. It's, they're working through that. Okay. Okay. Uh, we do uh, expect to go into closed session to discuss pending litigation um, and we'll do that now and then afterwards we'll come back because we've done commissioner comments I expect that we'll just simply come back and then adjourn but you're welcome to stay to see if that in fact happens <laughs> <laughs> you need a motion chair for that oh yes I move that we go into executive session close a uh, closed session sorry Is there a second? second all in favor all right. Bye. Bye. Bye.